If you can see it here and you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. A lot of times people believe in certain things but they keep to themselves. They don't put it out there. Truly believe in it. If you become vocal with it, you are creating that law of attraction and it will <clears throat> become Welcome reality. back to another video. So today is October, October 11th. So we're seven weeks out this week from Ironman Indian Wells 70.3. And as you guys saw by the title of this video, as you guys who follow me on Instagram, I wore a continuous glucose monitor for two weeks after seeing um, Lachlan Earnshaw I'll put his YouTube um, channel in the description. I saw a video he did and it was very insightful just about like um, obviously his findings of being pre-diabetic and having elevated blood glucose levels. And it really interested me just because I'm super into like um, how the body works and how everything like that kind of like corresponds with each other. So I, I got a CGM, I wore it for 14 days and it's obviously I've gone through the 14 day period. So I have the data. I also bought a, a manual uh, finger pricking blood glucose monitor. So I had two different sources of data to use and I want to talk to you guys about my findings later in the video, but I'm gonna take you guys through kind of a day in the life as well. I have a bike workout, a run, as well as just a light swim. And also, exciting news, one of my athletes is going to be racing Indian Wells 70.3 with me. So I need to make sure that I get um, something made up for him to bring him to that race. But as you can see, it's got a yellow sleeve and on the arm there, it has the, the word resilience. And the reason why I got resilience put on the arm sleeve is to obviously make it a bit more personal because I have resilience tattooed right here on my collarbone. So kind of cool with that. I'm actually a brand ambassador, a little sponsor announcement for um, Win Republic. So I'm getting my own tri suit made through them. Um, and yeah, I'm excited about that, but that's gonna be a secret because I wanna do a big promo video wearing the tri suit explain the meaning behind um, the meaning behind it and everything like that so that'll be really badass to show all right we are in the pain cave um, but yeah so today I'll sh pop the work up workout on the screen that I'm gonna be doing but I'm just gonna set up my um, iPad and stuff like that before I get into this ride though I'm just gonna do some cleaning of like my drivetrain because it's pretty mucky just because I've been riding outside a lot. And I'm kind of getting to the point now here where I live in Calgary, Alberta, where it's starting to get like almost too cold to ride outside every single time I go out to ride. So I'm officially transitioning to mainly um, riding on the trainer. Obviously that's not a bad thing. You can get really specific with the training. So I'm excited for that. Um, but I'm just gonna clean this up, clean up the drivetrain. And then it's about a two hour ride today. And I'm gonna run on the treadmill as well, just because it's an it's an easy run. I had a hard run session yesterday. I did about 10 miles of like quality running at like 6:30 and 6:40 and six minute miles. So my legs are pretty trash today. So it's just kind of an aerobic day in terms of running. And then on the bike, obviously, it's a, my hard bike workout. So. I've just been using Zwift on my iPad opposed to my laptop just because it's so much easier and honestly like for long rides and stuff like that like if I wanted to have my laptop you wanted to watch a movie or something I guess you could um, yeah we'll get the trainer hooked up make sure that the pedals are on actually what I do I'll connect my heart rate too, but I connect my trainer to these and then I switch it to the power meter pedals. And there we go. I was just taking a look at the workout in Training Peaks. So it's four by four minutes at 300 watts. So kind of like the purpose behind um, Intervals like that is to really just kind of like especially going into a race like Indian Wells It's kind of like practice. I guess like those surges like if I ever need to like 
put out a higher amount of power than like what my sustainable um, power is for like four to five minutes. I've been doing a lot of work like this within the three to four minutes of just like big gear work. Um, I think it's just really helped kind of improve my cycling overall. So four by four minutes, a little bit of a um, five to 10 minute off or whatever you want to call it break. Um, just pedaling at a lower watts and then I'm going to be going in a two by 12 minutes at a pretty hard, um, I think it's like 280 watts, 275 watts or something. So, um, no, this should be a good bike workout. Then right off the bike or right off, um, yeah, right off the bike, um, we'll be jumping into the treadmill for the, um, 70 minute run, which will just be completely aerobic. And one thing I'm doing with all my treadmill runs moving forward is making sure that um, I have a one to 2% incline on it always. But yeah. Performing without purpose, you're not gonna be ready when the time comes. It's this magical thing, purpose that we're all looking for. But what's funny about it all is that we need these things to perform. But we don't take a second to realize the purpose is always there. The purpose never leaves us, because the very purpose is you. You are always the purpose. There may be another purpose, like being a SEAL or going to college or whatever, but the main purpose in life is you. So if you wake up in the morning and you don't want to do something, you don't care enough about yourself. And that's what you need to really research is, man, why am I not doing this for myself? Because that is, that is the number one purpose in life, is to better oneself. So, so that's the only purpose I find. Like watts. So the reason I get every day, even though there's no like races, there's no school, 60 there's nothing to in front 70 of me, is because RPM, so it's a really practice. slow RPM, but that allows me to really like push and pull throughout the entirety of my stroke. So it's like, it's basically like doing slow controlled squats or like leg press for four minutes straight. You just have like time under tension the entire time. And that's the purpose of today's four by four minute big gear stuff. Just to kind of help me build some strength in my legs, just to be kind of more resilient to courses, throwing whatever kind of terrain, hills. It just makes you more resilient to not having your heart rate spike, it makes you more of an efficient rider, if that makes sense. So, two more to go, and then we just have the two by 12 minutes. So we have an hour or so left. I have about 15 seconds, and we're gonna get into the next in. All right, first 12 minute interval done. So it was set to 275 watts, but I had to, I made, I lasted about five minutes and then I bumped it down to 260. And 260 is like the perfect spot for me to keep my heart rate at like 170 BPM the entire time, which is ideally just below LT2, theoretically. Um, but yeah, one more interval left. Have a three minute, 45 second break, 20 minute cool down before we hop on the treadmill. All right, so two by 12 minutes done. Now I just have a 20 minute cool down that I'm gonna do. And then hop on the treadmill, which, yeah. I mean, this is perfect. I can talk to you guys as I'm cooling down here, but. So basically my goals for Indian Wiles 70.3 is to um, hold around 250 watts 
for the entirety of the 70.3 bike. So with that, I'm doing a lot of strength work to really get my top end up as high as I can. And I'm doing a lot of TT 20, 30 minute intervals as well to really just try to dial that in here. Cause I'm seven weeks out this week. I mean, training has been going really good and I'm really excited for that race. I mean, I've been working really hard for it. So I can't really talk even. This is a cool down. Okay. Bike ride done. Now I'm just gonna change. Quickly throw my shoes on, treat it like a race. Wow, not quite, but I also am just in a crunch for time because I do have a lot of work to do tonight, so. Get these shoes off. Also, I don't know, some, if some of you guys are really into like equipment, like I'm super like, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to a lot of this triathlon stuff. And like, so the last cycling shoes I had were some Mavics that I bought for like a hundred bucks. They were super cheap, but I invested, these are the RC, I want to say the RC nines, Shimano's, the spheres, literally love these. Like they make such a difference. Like for myself, I mean, I spend a lot of time on my bike every single week and obviously I'm really invested into this whole journey, like both personally like mentally and physically but like financially as well i mean i bought myself that bike um in the spring and obviously just like i've invested a lot of money um into this sport obviously like it's something that i see myself doing for a while and i'm i mean i'm i feel like i'm grinding um but yeah let's hop on this treadmill um 70 60 50 40 minutes i don't know how long i'll go for but we're just gonna go until i feel like i should stop all right so um i don't know how shaky this is i apologize but i'm not gonna film much because the camera's gonna die but i have the treadmill set on two percent incline i'm running really slow like a 940 and I'm just gonna do this for about an hour, call it, and then um, meet, so I'll probably see you guys back at my place or the library, so. All right, so back at my apartment now. I decided not to go to, um, to the library to get work done tonight just because it's already eight o'clock and I have a lot to do, so I'm just gonna do it all here. Um, but no, I'll throw up the stats from the bike and the run on the screen for you guys. So a set, like today, Wednesdays are my hard bike days. So hence why I was doing four by four minutes, so like some strength work, but then also two by 12 minutes, kind of just below um, my upper end of, or just below LT2. Um, obviously, I don't know for sure because I don't have a lactate meter, but like I use more or less heart rate to determine that. Um, and my heart rate was right around 170 um, beats per minute for each one of those um, 12 minute intervals at about 200 um, and 60 to 270 watts. But no, it felt really, really good today, to be completely honest. Like, felt really strong. And then I obviously did a 6.29 mile run after. I did the first 30 minutes running at 2% incline. And the reason why I did that is because I really want to focus on building strength in my run. Um, potentially, just like, I mean, it's going to make me a better runner. And I really want to do another full Ironman in 2024. So I really want to get better at running because I feel like that's the one thing that takes a long time to develop that muscular endurance for. So I'm really kind of trying to be proactive. Obviously, even though I'm focusing on 70.3 for right now, I am um, really, I really want to build up my um, running volume and everything like that and become a better, more efficient, faster runner. Um, so yeah, 30 minutes at 2% incline. 30 minutes at no incline, 147 beats per minute average heart rate, 
9.38 pace, 6.29 miles. And that's it. That's full day of training. I'm going to talk to you guys about my experience wearing a CGM and also using a continuous glucose monitor. So yeah, like I was kind of saying, I bought the CGM. So this was a Libra Freestyle 2 in here in Canada. You can just get this at any like Shoppers Drug Mart or London Drugs or anything like that. And they last for about 14 days. And you end up getting an app on your phone that you can download that basically will just it connects through Bluetooth. So I was able to get a constant live reading of my blood glucose levels, which was really, really cool. And um, rather than me going through, obviously, like I was thinking about how the best way for me to explain this was, and I was going to um, kind of just go through each day. But instead, I just kind of want to give you guys my general consensus, what I found with it, what I recommend if somebody else to do this. Um, but I mean, for starters, the big reason that why I wanted to do this test in the first place, obviously, if you guys have had, hadn't had the chance, go check out Lachlan Earnshaw's video that he did on it. It's much better than this uh, version that I'm gonna do. Um, but yeah, it was the main reason I wanted to do it was obviously so for myself. My diet has changed immensely. I've gone from before where I was primarily just focusing on bodybuilding and strength training. Um, obviously now swim, bike, run 15, 16, 17, 18, 20 hours a week. And my diet's changed a lot. I mean, I'm eating a lot more carbohydrates. Um, and I mean, yeah, I wanted to test this out and see if maybe I am pre-diabetic and I don't even know it. And um, I more or less just wanted to do it to kind of gain some data and gain some knowledge about myself. And my findings were actually really, really cool. So um, obviously take everything I'm about to tell you with a grain of salt. I'm not a medical professional. I don't know anything about anything. This is just me spitting whatever I found with myself. So I'll pop up whatever the normal. So the main reason why I wanted to have this stuff was to get my fasting blood glucose. That was really the only number I really cared about. Um, on top of that, I guess, also just seeing what foods would spike my blood glucose levels and stuff like that. But the main thing was what is my fasting blood glucose? And from the tests that from the 14 days, my fasting blood glucose ranged from anywhere from 5.6 to 6.1, um, depending on the day. And that technically puts me in the pre-diabetic range. Um, am I worried about it? Not really i mean i this is something that i i'm going to go get corrected and double checked by an actual medical professional although these are medical grade devices and they are accurate it's always good i think to go and source out obviously that professional opinion do a proper ac1 test i think they're called which is what i'm going to be doing um but no this was really really insightful and i mean obviously with me waking up every day with having my fasting blood glucose slightly elevated than what it's supposed to be. Um, I think that is really just a byproduct of eating a lot more calories and a lot more of those calories are coming from the source of carbohydrates. And the one thing that I noticed the genuine trend over the course of the 14 days of me wearing the CGM and uh, monitoring my blood glucose was I need to start watching my sugar intake. There's a lot more to diet than just macros in the forms of proteins, carbs, and fats. I need to pay more attention to the quality of the carbohydrates I'm eating specifically um, and really making sure that I'm not over consuming um, in the sugar side of things. Like just in, as an example, normally I mix my own carbohydrate drinks when I'm training. I use malt, raw maltodextrin. I mix it with my own fructose as well as just I measure out my own sodium and caffeine and everything like that. And the one day I forgot it and I had to buy two Gatorades from the gas station to get through my bike ride, my blood glucose shot up to like 12, whatever millimoles. And that was the highest I saw throughout the 14 days was when I drank those two Gatorades and I was just like, wow, like the difference, I'm getting the same amount of carbohydrates through, I'm actually getting more carbohydrates through my own homemade mix that I make. I'm getting about 80 to 100 grams of carbs an hour, whereas these two Gatorades were only giving me 40 grams of carbs an hour and they caused my blood glucose levels to spike immensely. God, I'm hitting the crap all over the place. But um, no, so my biggest takeaways from wearing the CGM are, I'm just gonna clean up my diet. Um, I think at the end of the day, I'm obviously gonna take all this with a grain of salt. I'm gonna go get um, a second opinion from a medical 
professional. Um, but I am going to clean up my diet. I'm going to start watching more what I eat in terms of carbohydrates, make sure my sugar intake is um, in check. I am tracking my food again in my fitness pal. And over the course of the 14 days, I tracked in my fitness pal as well. And I would say the biggest things that um, would cause my blood glucose to rise would be um, just those high sugar foods and like eating the, like reaching for a box of uh, having cereal opposed to oatmeal in the morning, little things like that. Yeah, it was a really, really cool test and I'm very grateful I did it. And this was just a big eye opener even for me. I mean, I that's what I love about all of, obviously all of this. I don't claim to know everything, um, but I'm always willing to learn and this was a definitely a good learning um, experience and I'm gonna clean up my diet moving forward, really try to obviously, obviously get us um, medical professional to um, do the proper tests and just make sure everything is okay but I highly recommend for anybody I literally picked these two things up the flash blood glucose monitor I think was around $30 and then the um, continuous CGM I think was a hundred dollars so a little bit pricey but I think if you can afford it um, it's a really good thing just a one-off test and try um, and now that I have this data, it'll be really cool to obviously check back in a few months. I'll get another one and just see how the little changes that I'm making in my diet moving forward, eating just a bit more cleaner, um, obviously bringing that overall carbohydrate intake down just slightly and seeing how that um, plays a role in my overall blood glucose levels. But this was a really, really cool test. And I'm really happy I did it. And I think for anybody who is an endurance athlete, I mean, I'm 21 years old and the fact that um, I do have slightly elevated, not that it's like bad or anything, but I do have slightly elevated blood glucose levels. I mean, it's something that you should be aware of. And the sooner that you are aware of it, I think the, the better you'll be for it. Um, I mean, that's something that is I can change specifically through diet. So um, no, I'm really excited, honestly. Now diabetes, whatever aside, um, I'm really excited to obviously keep training. I'm really having a lot of fun making these videos. I hope you guys enjoy. I mean, obviously, like I'm trying to put out a video a week, and I'm I'm in a really busy time in my life right now. But um, so I do apologize. The quality of these videos are kind of all over the place. So you're really just getting like, um, I guess this is about as raw as it gets. So I really appreciate all you guys who take sit down watch these videos here. I mean, I mean it means a lot, and I'm mean, obviously. Um, I'm excited to show you guys what's gonna happen in India on India uh, What's gonna happen in Indian Wells for that race? Um, I'm really looking forward to that 70.3. I've been pouring my heart into it. So um, Thank you guys again for watching stay tuned for the next one and um, Let me get, let me guys Let me guys know Let me know you guys um, if you would like a more in-depth video about the CGM and um, I would I would be more than happy to go more in depth about it. I know I only talked about it for about eight to ten minutes here, but if you guys are interested, just leave it in the comments below. But if not, comment something cool. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next one.